Hello. This has been such a crazy week. It started out crazy. Like, I, VC, PE, private equity, a big news announcement I can't even talk to you about yet, but I will kind of tease a little bit and might have something to do with things and stuff. But here's the thing. Uh, I... I started this little project a year ago. This is the beginning of the second year of the show. And I will talk to you more about why I decided to do that later. But just allow me to, let me to say that this week has been so crazy, I am convinced that I was doing the first full year of this show in preparation for the news I have to tell you about this week, because Portland Startup Community, you've really, you, you, you've really outdone yourself this week. So let's get right into it. Uh, I don't want to delay. There's a lot of news to cover, and I would still love to talk about like what motivated me to start the show a year ago and how much I'm looking forward to year two. But all that being said, let's get into it. First and foremost, uh, I am a bigger fan of venture capital than I am of private equity. I'm not necessarily a fan of venture capital in general, but it can be helpful for the right type of company. So, starting this week, biggest news story, Icon, which uh, is, a, is a, what even is a Portland startup anymore? Like, that's one of the things I'm trying to figure out. But I say, if your co-founder and CTO lives in Portland, you have team members who are here in Portland, that that co-founder has been a serial entrepreneur in the community, your lead developer has been quintessential to startups in the Portland area, then, then by my estimation, that is a Portland startup. So Icon, Icon Savings Plan, going to consider them a Portland startup. And they just raised $9.2 million in a seed round. If you're not familiar with Icon, really what they're doing is trying to like disentangle kind of benefits packages like retirement plans from, you know, the U.S. You have to have, you have to be working and that's tied to your employer and those kind of things. Like really trying to figure out how to uh, make benefits like a retirement plan accessible to anyone and everyone. And so that's a love that concept, love that they're pursuing that and happy to report they have $9.2 million in the bank to help them continue that journey. I really look forward to, to seeing Sasha Mace is the CTO there. Uh, you may remember him from Simple and, and other places like that, but uh, Sasha leading the technology strategy there from Portland. And again, lots of people in Portland who work for Icon. So it's always nice to see that these Portland startups are still garnering investment to pursue their ideas. Congratulations to Icon. And uh, I hope the news gets picked up more. It was it was an exclusive for Axios. And so it didn't really it didn't really go very far. And probably it was released late and then like Friday maybe of last week. And so I don't think it got the pickup it deserved. So please take a look at Icon, Icon Savings Plan and, and learn more about them because they're really working on something interesting and I consider them a Portland startup. So I would encourage you to consider them a Portland startup as well. The first year of the show seemed like a complete experiment week to week, trying to figure stuff out. But I feel like I've got, you know, we've got something going here you and me, and I would love to see you here not only next week, but every single week after that. So if you're down to hang out with me week to week, please subscribe. Okay, VC, that's the VC news. The PE, private equity news for this week, is a company in town called PayRange, which, uh, and apparently I'm so excited, my voice is cracking, uh, called PayRange, which is, uh, let me lower my voice to be more respectful. Pay range is, has developed a technology that allows you to pay at vending machines or video game cabinets or pinball machines, basically allow you to pay with your phone the way you would at like a, you know, a square device or, or, or what have you. 
um, really allow you to use your phone in situations where typically you would have had to use change or crumpled up dollar bills or whatever. Uh, they've been going for quite a while. They kind of came out of a previous company here in town called Venscreen. Uh, Venscreen was focused on really a hardware software solution. The, the innovation that PayRange made was, well, if everybody has their phones, why do we need the hardware? Why don't we just let them do it on their phones with the software and the little device and the things? And so that was really their innovation with PayRange. And uh, they've been doing well, you know? They've been, uh, they've been driving revenue, gaining customers, all those kind of things, raising some capital. But now, I don't know what the number is. I just know there are likely like eight zeros involved because the way the news came out, it said they have a nine figure, nine, nine times, nine figure <laughs> private equity investment. The Portland Business Journal kind of like categorized that as a hundred million plus in private equity. So at least a hundred million, maybe more, who knows? Based on what they based based on what they've raised, but uh, all that being said, private equity like it don't. It's a thing. Mostly, what I am focused on when I hear about private equity investments is generally that means the founder and maybe some early stage employees get to take some money off the table when that deal comes through. So by and large, a liquidity event of some sort. And liquidity events in Portland are rare and they're good, especially when the founder and early stage employees uh, receive some, some benefit from that liquidity event. So I'm hopeful that's what's happened here. Don't know a ton about it. Just know that it's a huge number for pay range. It's a huge number for a company here in town. There have been a few other companies in the past who've receive private equity at that level, but this one just kind of came out of the blue. So pay range, nine figures. So at least a hundred million dollars in private equity invested in the pay range. And then we'll see what happens with the company from now on. But like they really were early leaders in this idea of paying for things with your phone for stuff that would previously have taken coins or bills and um just really interested to see where they go from here with this substantial investment from private equity okay more news earlier stage than either vc or pe but uh our friends at pitch latino which has just grown to be like a a complete network of events happening in, in the Pacific Northwest. Pitch Latino held Pitch Latino Bend this week, uh, had the competition, people voted, people got the big checks and those kind of things. And uh, it, all well attended, like I saw photos, like the, the room was packed and uh, I saw the photos of the people with the checks and they looked happy. And the thing I love most about Pitch Latino is that as I say, it's not founder's tribute. It's not kind of this like entertainment thing where the founders like don't get much out of it. Like anybody who participates in Pitch Latino, much like Pitch Black, the event that inspired Pitch Latino, anybody who participates in Pitch Latino presents on stage, they get some capital out of it. So all of these Bend companies got, got capital out of it. But the other thing is the company that won Pitch Latino Bend 2024, as well as the company that won Pitch Latino Seattle, get to come to Pitch Latino Portland 2024 and compete with the Portland companies who are selected. And that happens the next week. I think it's 10-10. Uh, I think it's October 10th that that's occurring. So at OMSI, uh, get a ticket, the $25, all proceeds go to those big checks for the for the people who participate so if you're interested in that if you like if you if you like it an excuse to go to omsi 
maybe show up to Pitch Latino. And uh, Pitch Latino Portland will feature, I think it's 11 companies. I'm going to read them off just so you know who all is presenting at Pitch Latino. Uh, Portland. <laughs> I'm so used to just calling it Pitch Latino. I get really confused when I have to like qualify that it's Pitch Latino Portland. But you know, the, the, the kids these days, they grow up and they do bigger and better things. So it's not just Pitch Latino anymore. It's Pitch Latino Portland. But at least they're aggregating some of their other winners into the competition. So <laughs> I encourage you to get a ticket. I'll be there. I'll be there hanging out at Pitch Latino Portland and uh, and watching the pitches. I'm really excited to see folks pitch. And um, and of course, you get to vote. You get to vote for your favorite. And your favorite takes home the biggest of the big checks. So uh, if you're interested in seeing a bunch of awesome Latin-led companies pitching what they're building, I suggest you show up to OMSI on October 10th but get your ticket so that they have some prize money. <laughs> Let me read off the folks who are pitching there. I will not give you any descriptions because I want you to show up and hear what they're doing, but you might recognize some names. And I will admit I am I may mispronounce a few of these, and I apologize ahead of time. I've not actually heard them say the names of their companies, so I don't have that reference point but I will do my best as I go through Pitch Latino Portland 2024 companies. Okay, here's who's pitching. Azen Flow, Estrellitas, Bilingual, I think it's Estrellitas, Bilingual, Okada, Orox Leather, who folks may be familiar with from Old Town, right next to the to the Deadstock, Portland Water, huge. I, I talked about this when they got into the accelerator, when they got to the Latino Founders Accelerator. Portland Water is genius, okay? I am so excited to see Portland Water pitch. No, not, not lessening my excitement for any of the other pitches, but if you're not from the region, and you, or maybe you never visited Portland, Portland has ridiculously good water. I don't know why. We did, like, mountain water, you know? sky blue waters i don't know but we just have really really good water and so to see a brand really adopt that and say yeah we do have good water we're going to put it in a can we're going to sell it to other people that is amazing to me so portland water super excited about them propio uh solar cycle the suma platform todos media i'm gonna link this up i love todos media if you are watching this on the YouTube, which I hope you are. Todos is on here. They are this huge, like, I don't know, like I started watching them maybe a few weeks ago and they like had a few hundred followers or whatever. Now they have like thousands because they're, they're this focused on both kind of Latin cuisine, uh, you know, beverage culture, but they also do some BIPOC stuff. They're really just this amazing media property that's focused on really interesting people in the Portland community that are doing really interesting things. And uh, like, it's kind of one of those you see it and you're like, well, duh, why didn't somebody do this before? Definitely linking them up. Please subscribe to Totos Media. If you don't subscribe to this channel, go over there and subscribe because it's like, I don't even know. It's like Food Network, but like faster and tighter and more well-produced like i it, it's just really good trust me like that and and hassan hates portland you need you need to go subscribe to that one too i'll link that up as well that just premiered this week but i digress uh totos media love them can't wait to see the pitch uh and used to just love esperanza which was a coffee shop that the founder of totos media also ran Take a moment. Esperanza is no more, but I'm happy to see Totus Media doing what they're doing. Uh, more training the impact way of being. Okay, those are all the companies. They will take the stage October 10th at OMSI. Get your ticket, $25. Get several tickets. Also, there's a, there's also an opportunity to donate if you want to to uh, the organization, but at least just get your ticket. 
So there's tons of prize money for all these promising companies that, that we're getting to, to experience. Thanks to our friends at Latino Founders for bringing this group together, for setting up this event. Every year, Pitch Black, Pitch Latino, they're just these great events that we as a community get to show up for and support a bunch of amazing founders. So I hope you take the opportunity to be there. And if you happen to see me cowering in a corner or hiding somewhere, please come say hello. It would be good to talk to you, even though I'm introverted and I won't really act like I like it. But, you know, if you want to, please feel free. I'll be there. Speaking of pitches, uh, the biggest angel level, early stage pitch event contest thingamajig in the Pacific Northwest, maybe on the West Coast, maybe west of the Mississippi. I don't know. It's big. It's a big deal. Bend Venture Conference, which draws not only startups from all over the place, it draws investors from all over the place to Bend, Oregon in the middle of October. Every year, folks come, they hang out, they meet one another, they listen to startups pitch, and then at the end, some of the startups get checks and, and some don't, but that's how competitions work. Anyway... <laughs> Ben Venture Conference has announced who their early stage winners are. And there's a there's a pre-competition, you know, almost like the Olympic trials. You know, we just got through with the Olympics. You know, the Olympic trials, you like have to try out and then you do really well. You make it on the Olympic team. That's kind of what the early stage contest looks like for Ben Venture Conference. I think they do a pub talk pitch session and then people vote and then they pick who they want. Again, I apologize. I'm going to have to read these because I don't want to miss anyone. But here are the five companies that were selected to take the stage at Ben Venture Conference in the early stage startup competition. 4G, Howl at the Spoon, The Offer House, Prophetic, and Rose City Robotics. I've got two fun facts for you based on who was selected with 4G, Howl at the Spoon, The Offer House, Prophetic, and Rose City Robotics. Four of the five companies are from the Portland metropolitan area. So that's cool. Like our startups are, are getting some recognition from the Ben Venture Conference in that regard. Even more interesting, and this is your second fun fact, three of those companies are Upstart Collective members. So Upstart Collective is the co-working space focused on early stage startups looking to kind of aggregate and, and provide community for folks who are building early stage startups in town, three of their residents are, are on this list of five. So what is that? 60%? Six, yeah, 60% of the companies pitching in the early stage round at Ben Venture Conference are Upstart Collective residents. So if you want to hang out with people like that, maybe take a look at Upstart Collective. Maybe that's a place for you to build your startup. You can go talk to them and you can go hang out with these people and they can tell you about their Ben Venture conference experience or what have you. Uh, much like Pitch Latino, I will be at Ben Venture conference. I'll be at Briefly. If you plan to be down there and you want to sync up while you're there, uh, please let me know. I'll be there for a little bit. I, I haven't been in a while, so I thought I'd, I thought I'd make the, the journey down to Bend and see what's what down there. Um, always appreciate the Ben Venture Conference stuff. Uh, really well programmed, designed event. And again, one of the marquee events annually for all of the Pacific Northwest, one of the best early stage pitch competitions around. So I think tickets are still available. If you want to go down and hang out at the at the theater and watch the people pitch and go to the happy hours on the, the other networking kind of things, maybe consider going to Ben Venture Conference and seeing all these, these Portland companies pitch down there and you can cheer and clap and things for them and see if they win the money. That uh, Ben Venture Conference, October 17th and 18th, uh, as the name might suggest, Bend, Oregon. So uh, for folks in Portland, a little bit of a trip, but well worth it. Always a good event, and I hope to see you down there. <laughs> Speaking 
of Upstart Collective. I just, I have these awful segues. I apologize. <laughs> like, I just, I, I don't know even how my brain works. I'm just like, oh, I said this thing, and that reminds me of this thing, and then I tell you about the other thing. But Upstart Collective, no, no offense to them, of course. Uh, Upstart Collective, you know they had the first Friday. The first Friday is the first Friday of every month-ish, where they have kind of a happy hour, bring the community together, bring the members of their co-working facilities, because they have multiple, co-working facilities together to hang out and, and meet members of the community. Uh, so that first, if you're watching this early in the day on Friday, it is first Friday. It is the first Friday of October. So they are having first Friday, Upstart Collective West Side, I believe, and the reason I think I'm right about Upstart Collective West Side is because immediately following, they're having a hackathon. So if you're looking to like throw some stuff together, if you're looking to throw down with some other developers, or maybe you know, put some stuff together, or build something, or pitch an idea, or that kind of thing, there's a hackathon starting tonight. So go to First Friday, meet some people, stay for the hackathon, do the hackathon thing. It could be fun. Could be some interesting stuff that comes out of there. Who knows? You could go to First Friday. You could meet interesting people. You could decide to participate in the hackathon. And then next year, around this time, you could be on stage at Ben Venture Conference 2025. I'm, I, I believe you can do it. I have ultimate confidence in you that if you go to First Friday, go to the hackathon, build something cool, over the, the year following, I'm pretty confident you can be on stage at BBC. So why don't you do that? What <laughs> what better thing do you have to do than that? That sounds amazing. Go do that. So uh, Upstart Collective, West Side, First Friday, Hackathon, and eventually you're, you're on stage at Ben Venture Conference. I look forward to seeing you. I'll go. If you make it on stage because you were at the hackathon and you built the thing and you did the stuff and you, you got picked to be a BBC, I, I will go down there to see you pitch. I'll even attend all the pitches just to see you pitch. So yeah, maybe try it. Give it a shot. I have ultimate confidence in you that you can do that. So first Friday, at least go to first Friday and then maybe think about the hackathon and then maybe think about BBC. That's all I'm saying. No pressure. Just saying. Now you see why this week was so crazy. Like the 9 million plus in VC. The nine figures in private equity. We got all the Pitch Latino stuff going on. We got Ben Venture Conference. Tons and tons of stuff. But there's still big news to come out. The problem is my flux capacitor is not working correctly, nor is my DeLorean. So I can't really jump into the future and like record the news about what's going to happen even though i know what's going to happen because like i i would love to tell you but i have to respect like timelines embargoes what have you so even though i know this news uh even though i'm super excited about this news that's coming up that is big news i'm not just blowing smoke this is big news big news for portland Big news for other people. Big news for small business. Big news for small business. So let's just like out big news for small business in Portland. Let's leave it at that without, without revealing anything. That's happening. That will be announced at the Built Festival, which is happening probably while you're watching this. It's Friday, October 4th, 10-4. 10-4, good buddy. Uh, that's happening. And it will be announced at the end of that event. And then once it's been announced, then I think what I'll do is maybe record a special episode just to kind of cover off on that news, kind of like I did for the JAMA thing, because that was big news. Uh, I, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But like, rest assured, I will talk about this news later once it is out. I simply cannot talk about it right now. As much as I trust you, I know you would keep it a secret until it was ready to be revealed. But I can't tell you. I want to tell you. I think you can tell I want to tell you, but just uh, let's uh, chill out. Chill out. I'll tell you the news later. Just know that it's big news for a small business in Portland. Me and you. 
keep it secret or come to the Built Festival and hang out with us there and you'll you'll hear about it. So, and then I'll, I'll link it up and all the things and, and you'll get it. And yeah, so that's it. So uh, those are all the big, huge news stories. Again, uh, personally, huge like milestone for me. Last week was the 52nd episode of this show. Given that I do it once a week, that means I successfully <laughs> completed the first year. And if you're still here listening to this, thank you so much for uh, showing up, for listening to the show, for hanging out with me while I babble about Portland startup stuff. I had no idea how much I would enjoy this, how much I would enjoy spending time with you week to week. Uh, I've been, you know, I've started podcasts. I've been on podcasts any number of times. And uh, I just really never found that thing that quite worked or that I was able to quite keep going. And this is really, this has really seemed to work for me. So I hope it's working for you. Uh, I do enjoy getting to wrap up the week with you and kind of share all this news. It's been, it's been really rewarding and it started as something that was very stressful <laughs> and that I was very uncomfortable doing to something that I look forward to to and, and yet am still completely uncomfortable doing but you know that may just be how it is I, I at least like it enough that I like being uncomfortable doing the thing telling you about the news and hanging out with you every week so we've gotten through one year let's see if we can do another year let's see if we can do another 52 weeks and then kind of keep this going and keep the news going and highlight all these amazing events and people and startups and things that are happening in the Portland startup community. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're hanging out. And uh, I just really appreciate week to week you supporting this show. So I'll be here next week. I hope you are as well. I hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.